Hi there, Eve here from Vitamin Eve Nutrition Counseling and today I'm going to talk about how many meals to have in a day and what my recommendations are. But before I go over this, I just want to thank you all for subscribing to this channel and for all of your comments. I so love this community and if you haven't done so yet, I invite you to subscribe and please leave your comments below when you're done watching this video. So here's Jax in the back. I took him for a walk so he's chilling now and today we're going to talk about what to do about the number of meals to have in a day. Many people talk about having just one meal, is it grazing all day, is it three square meals, or is it something else? Well, let's talk about each of these different options, starting with just having one meal. I know this works for a lot of people because they really like the convenience of it, they don't need to think about food all day, and you know, just having that one meal you know, just makes things a lot easier. They don't need to take food with them when they go to work and they have that one meal. The, the big problem with this, and maybe you guessed it already, and if you guessed it, hooray, leave that in the comments below, is that chances are if you're only having one meal a day, you're probably getting too hungry. You know, usually for most people, one meal a day sets them off for getting too hungry and it, getting too hungry, as we all know, is more likely to increase food obsession, craving, overeating, binging, and all of those types of things. Maybe not immediately, but usually in the long term, skipping meals has that effect. And if you're only having one meal, chances are you're skipping meals. So I usually don't recommend that option. The next option is grazing all day. And maybe you've done this before. Um, I've tried all of these things, so I've done this as well. <laughs> grazing all day is like if you have like a piece of fruit in the morning and then later in the day you have some granola and then a little bit later you have some string cheese and after that maybe a small can of tuna and after that and on and on and on. The issue I have with grazing all day, and grazing means different things to different people, but the way I define grazing is when you're eating but you're not really satisfying yourself. And this is problematic, especially if it's done for a long period of time, is again, when you're hungry, food is on your mind, just like my hand is in front of my face, right? So when you're hungry, food is on your mind and it's really hard to concentrate in your life. When you satisfy yourself, you can move on with your life. You can stop thinking about food and do the task at hand. When you're grazing and you're only partially satisfying yourself, food is still kind of in your face. <laughs> you know, your fingertips are in my eyes. I still can't see straight ahead. Same thing happens with food is when you're barely satisfying yourself throughout the day, food is going to be on your mind throughout the day just like my fingers are in front of my face. And what this could lead to from many people, especially if this is done over a long period of time, is it could begin to make people feel like they're always thinking about food. Well they are because they're never really satisfied and they're always having a little bit. It could also make people, finally when they come home at night, when they're tired at the end of the day and you know they have a full pantry of food and the refrigerator is full and their freezer is so full it actually might make them more prone to overeating finally at night when they get home and there's an abundance of food available so grazing not really satisfying uh, yourself throughout the day could be problematic for these reasons not to mention Part of the pleasure of food is feeling that satisfaction in the middle of the day. That is rejuvenating, it's re-energizing, not just physically, but energetically as well if you take that time to have a meal. I know many of us, it might not be realistic to sit down and to meditate and to have this relaxing meal, but being thoughtful of having adequate food throughout your day really helps bring out a sense of satisfaction. So what I want to talk about, oh, next, the third option is breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And we're getting closer here, because at least with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you have different opportunities to feed yourself throughout the day, but that could lead a big gap in between your meals. So for example, if you're eating your breakfast like at eight and your lunch is at noon and dinner isn't until seven, well, what do you do then? You know, that leads a big gap. If you're eating lunch at noon and dinner isn't until seven, that's a lot of hours. And so having the breakfast, lunch, and dinner model could be problematic if you're not letting yourself have snacks in those big gaps. So the brunch, breakfast, lunch, and dinner model is great though if you do allow yourself to have snacks if you get hungry in between mealtime like in that example I shared. So what I do, what I recommend, is eating when you're hungry and stopping when you're full. If you knew I was gonna say that, bravo, you know me well. I like to follow more or less the three meal model, but oftentimes, 
I tend to have four or maybe even five meals a day depending on how many hours I'm awake and how satisfying my meals are and what my day looks like. So I'm actually gonna give you some examples so you could reflect and think if this is helpful for you. So for example, like let's say a regular day like today, I might have my breakfast like at eight-ish, my lunch around noon-ish, and dinner for me usually isn't until seven or eight ish so that gap between lunch and dinner like i was just talking about is just too great so i plan to have a great snack at around three or four that will carry me over until dinner time not something small but something substantial enough to carry me over what about if you sleep in what about the weekends like if you don't have a dog waking you up or a little baby waking you up and you actually get to sleep in let's say you sleep in until 10 11 or 12 you know you might not be eating until 11 12 or 1 even you might not have your first meal until then so what to do in that situation is to have your first meal as soon as you are up and you know you're eating and plan to eat again in the next three to four hours so if you ate breakfast like let's say at, at 11 then that mean means you might be eating your next meal at 11 12 1 2 at 2 or 3 ish I know that might be a weird time to you know have a meal but when you start your day later or if you're in a different time zone that's good to know to do that timing thing so I, I hope you find that tool helpful the next question I get asked often is what if I'm up late you know uh, on my Instagram um, account I was actually doing this video live and somebody had that question Eve what if you're up late is it okay to eat late at night well the truth is if you're eating dinner like at you know six or seven and you're not sleeping until like 12 or 1 you are gonna get hungry again again if you're eating at six or seven you're probably gonna get hungry three to four hours later which is like 9 or 10 p.m. Right, so having something there, anticipating your hunger, could definitely help. This might mean that you are having more than just three meals a day. So having that flexibility, because how many numbers of meals, how many meals you have a day, how many times you get hungry, is going to depend on many things, including how many hours you're awake. Also, what the rest of your eating looks like if you're having satisfying meals. Also, um, your immunity, if you're fighting a cold or, you know, um, fighting COVID, you know, many of us are, or, um, you know, what's happening with your hormones and on and on and on. A lot of things could impact how hungry and full you are. So an important mindset to have as you're, you know, thinking about this is it's going to be variable. Expect your appetite to be different every day and that's okay. Tuning into your hunger and stopping when you're full and learning what that is, is such an important thing and having snacks uh, readily available for the times that you are physically hungry really can make a big difference. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, I'm so glad you got to see Jax relax in the background for the whole thing. And I enjoy your comments, so please feel free to leave any comments below on any questions you have, how this was helpful, um, or anything else and if you haven't done so already I invite you to subscribe because it will be so great to have you as part of this community so thank you so much for watching happy eating and happy new year everybody bye